A British gentleman in the late 1800s was born to a poor family, but through grit and determination begged, borrowed, and stole his way to financial success. Always obsessed with climbing the social ladder, he even courted, then married a woman from a rich family. Through her family, he was able to get into a very prestigious gentleman's club where he could rub elbows with wealthiest of wealthy. He knew this was one of his best opportunities because for all his hustle, he knew he wasn't what was considered old money and thus never able to rise higher than he was. One night while at the club, he overhears some gentleman talking. One tells a story of going on an African safari where he killed a lion, the head of which he had mounted and placed in his study. A second gentleman mentions a trip to the Yukon to investigate their gold prospecting operation, and while there he downed a large elk whose antlers he mounted above the fireplace in his living room. A third gentleman tells a story about going to their estate in India where he killed a tiger from the back of an elephant and had it made into a rug he put in his bedroom. Our British gentleman hears these stories and realizes that to keep up appearances, he will need to take an excursion and down some sort of big game himself. So he makes arrangements, getting supplies and chartering a ship to Africa. Once arriving, he finds a guide who speaks English and some other men to carry his belongings, and they make their way into the dark jungle. As they trek through the jungle, cutting down the heavy foliage with machetes, they begin to hear a sound in the distance. As they get further in, the British gentleman begins to make out that it's the sound of drumming and assumes that it's some local tribe having some sort of celebration. And as his companions don't seem concerned, he assumes it's not something that will become an issue. As they progress through the jungle and the day becomes late, the drumming has increased in volume and intensity. After making camp and preparing their meals, the Englishman is getting a bit nervous and asks the guide if the drumming is something they should be concerned with. The guide waves a hand and says, Not to worry. The only time to worry is if the drumming stops. During the next day, as they make their way through the jungle, the drumming continues to intensify. By the time they make their camp on the second night, the drumming has grown so loud that it's drowning out every other noise in the jungle. No birds, insects, nothing can be heard. Very suddenly, the drumming stops. Absolutely stone-cold silence. The Englishman bolts up frantically, grabbing the guide and asks, That's bad, isn't it? You said the drumming stopping was bad? The guide shakes his head and says, It's absolutely terrible. It means it's time for the accordion solo.